Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Today in history, I'm, I'm going back to the year 2013, and it was in you know the build-up to the elections uh, that eventually brought in President Muhammadu Buhari. Good luck, Jonathan, was still in power then, and there was a loads of uh, statements and reactions to you know the elections and the possibilities of him getting re-elected or losing the election. It was on this day that Asari Dokubo and the Arewa Youth Forum had a little back and forth with regards to Asari Dokubo's statements. Uh, Dokubo, of course, um, came on that criticism after declaring that the Niger Delta region cannot guarantee the country's peace if President Goodluck Jonathan is prevented from running for a second term in 2015. Uh, he, of course, had controversy when he said the Niger Delta um, region would react if he wasn't given that opportunity. Um, there was, of course, all of this, you know, of course, was in the build-up to the elections. He eventually did run and lost. Um, he came after a recent news conference in Abuja at that time where he questioned reports that some elders from the north are opposed to Jonathan's second-term bid. He said that there have been more presidents from the north than uh, the country's south since Nigeria gained independence from Britain in 1960. He also said it was time for people for, from the south to lead the country. Some Nigerians condemned his remarks, saying that there's um, yeah, a recipe for disunity and could plunge the country into chaos and insecurity. There was also those, um, you know, conspiracy theorists who had said that, oh, you know, Jonathan, you know, had promised that he wasn't going to run. Uh, he was only just going to finish up, um, um, you know, his tenure after uh, Omar Musa Yaradwa. And right after that, you know, he was only going to do one term and all of that. But uh, they were all just statements here and there. Um, but, you know, the, the historical moment, um, you know, in this is um, the threat by Sari Dukubo that the Niger Delta region might go back into creating chaos if uh, Good Luck Jonathan was not given a chance to run for election. And, of course, we all know how that played out. He did run and lost. Yes, that's it. Today in history, May the 11th. Moving away from Nigeria now to India, on this day in history, in the year 2000, India's population became 1 billion. And that's because a girl by the name Asta Aurora became India's billionth baby. So her mom, you know, went to the hospital that day, you know, just listening to her talking about the birth of her baby, you know, talking about how they did not come from you know, a, a, a rich background, they're from humble beginnings, and that, you know, she went to the hospital that day, she just had her child, and uh, she saw about 200 journalists in her face, cameras flashing all, all over, and uh, because, you know, India was trying to push a campaign for uh, family planning, because the population of the country was basically exploding, so they said they were going to mark this milestone by celebrating the millionth baby in India and you know to preach the families to begin to have you know smaller smaller families and fewer children so her name is Asta Aurora and she was born in Delhi India and uh, <clears throat> we know that uh, this happened and uh, the country really you know threw a big celebration for this in Matt headlines around the world it was on all the major news channels interviews with the mom the family you know that's basically what happened this day in history uh, asta aurora was born in india making you know india the country after china to uh, be in the billion when it comes to population in the country that's phenomenal um one billion people one billion you know but you know why i'm why i'm um um, you know, one thing that I'm just going to point out, you know, from this is the fact that um, one thing that they, you know, I believe have gotten right, um, that I, I'm also sure that, that Nigerians or Nigeria still hasn't been able to put together, is a proper census. Mm. Um, if they've been able to, you know, at, um, you know, calculate and, you know, monitor and, you know, do their birth, you know, death, um, birth and death mm -hmm. uh, figures properly and know that they have hit a billion people, um, I feel like, you know, we have, you know, for the longest time, you know, and people have also said that since, you know, independence, we've not been able to do our natural and a very proper census, which should Indeed. be done every 10 years, actually. But, you know, since, uh, well, it was 2006 or so, we've not had a proper census in Nigeria. 
And, and so, you know, when we say, oh, we're 200 million or 180 million, so we say 220 million, you know, these are just assumptions and projections, you know, of what we truly are. Um, do we know who our 200 millionth Nigerian is? <laughs> <laughs> do we know who our 200 and, you know, 50 million, yet million, or whatever? Million. million but for Astra's case, of course, there were lots of babies born in that very hospital. Mm. But, you know, they decided that she was going to be the one. She was born around 5 a.m., you know, judged based on, you know, the time of birth. And, you know, she was adjudged the, the one millionth baby. So happy birthday to her. So today she'll be 21. Is, is that right? That's I'm not. Right. I'm not. I'm not fantastic in math, but that's it. So happy <laughs> birthday to you, Asha Aurora, wherever you are in any part of the world. So that's it um, for today in history. We'll take a break here and to return and join a conflict reporter and a researcher to discuss something we, you know, um, had in our conversation. Uh, I think that was yesterday about terrorists, possibly Islam fighters, possibly Boko Haram fighters. Uh, we'll be getting clarity on that. This uh, disbursing food items and sharing money to kids in maybe the northern part of Nigeria. Do stay with us.